Welcome, welcome to the Inspired Mind Scope Train. So excited for another Saturday. Wait for us, we get some people to pop in after Serene, or Saren. That's how she said it. I heard her say her name the other day. Saren. Okay. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Kathy Grillo of Kathy Grillo Designs. And this is where you can find me. Hi, Cake Man. Hi, Madness. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, it's Anita. Thanks. All right, so today we have a great lineup, everybody. A great lineup. Take a screenshot. See who we have coming. Follow everybody. Up next after me is um, Ash Tattoos. And look, she has a surprise. A surprise. Don't know what she's going to do, but we shall see. She's a great artist, not only a tattoo artist, so I guess we'll get to be surprised at what she's going to do. As soon as my husband's done digging in the drawer, thank you, babe, <laughs> I will move on to drawing. I swear I need an eye on the air sign, but it probably still wouldn't be respected. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to work on this little graphic design I've been, like, messing around with. I've put together a quick little reference here. Thanks. So what I like to do with these is I play around with a lot of texture. Texture on digital, you say? Yes, texture. <laughs> So, I like to bring you in really close here. And hopefully you can see some of the, um, the texture stuff on, oh, 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 on my digital, my digital, uh, effects here. As my dog barks in the background rudely, I'm telling you, right? Coconut! Mommy's trying to do something. Come on. <laughs> she got left behind. Mm. Alright. So, first up, we're going to do... Well, that's a little too close. We're going to do... The middles. The middles. Alright. I've been using an acrylic... acrylic setting for this and what I really like to do is get really bright colors so I'll just kind of um, I need to get on the right layer that would help where is my there it is I'm just going to kind of like swirl these colors I am painting underneath my graphic design so I did all the work of making my lines um, crisp and bright. Not totally. I still have some touch-ups to do. But for the most part. And now I just get to focus on having fun with the color and texture. And digitally you can create some very interesting textures. I'll show you in a minute. So, if I turn off the sketch... This is what I have. And then I take this little smearing. This is this um, blender is called a smear. It's called Smear 2. And what it does, it blends them, but it just kind of smears it around. So you don't really lose your colors into a new color. It kind of does this psychedelic woo stuff for you. And the one advantage of painting under the um, drawing is I don't have to worry about the line staying in the lines. I can come and um, erase it and fix it up at a later part. So, I kind of take colors and they're messed around. I turn back on and I can see that I need to spread it out a little bit. And I'm trying to get like... I'm going to have to add more yellow. 
I want each of the, I, I kind of want different colors within these little spots. But let me add some more. A yellow. Mellow yellow. All right. Okay, kind of like that. So then to create, what I want to create for the pollen here is, I want it to look like I maybe put paint down and then took this stencil and squeezed it on top of the paint. And then you would have like little bumps of paint just like being sucked out through the holes, if that makes sense. So I have this little thing, it's called a depth lofter. So now watch the magic here. I want to make it a little bigger for this one. I was doing a smaller one before. But this one needs to be a little bigger. All right. So what this depth lofter does is actually raise a section of my paint. So I'm going to do this little circle. And you'll, it'll look like I'm pulling paint up through this hole. If you could see this. So I'm creating this bumpy texture with this um, impasto brush tool by lofting the layers of this selected part of paint. So I'm just kind of like saying, oh, I like, I like to imagine like I'm reaching in and just grabbing the paint and pulling it out. Hi. Sharon's here. So, you just do this really quick. Nothing exciting. I'm, just, I'm making a little texture here, and you'll start seeing the bumps. And the more I, the longer I keep it and put around on here. Oh, you had a bad connection. You've been having connection troubles all week, huh? That stinks. And the longer you keep it here, the higher you can loft it. I guess it only goes so far. You know, it'd be cool if I could. I'm sure there's a program somewhere where I could just kind of grab it and go and have a big. It's probably some 3D program that you could do that on. Which I don't know too many people. Hi, baby doll. I don't know too many people who do the 3D. I know Chris Murphy, C.S. Murphy. He does ZBrush sometimes. But that is more graphic and probably beyond my my skill. Yeah, do follow her. Follow her. She's great. Yay. It's a good Instagram account. Good Periscope account. Oh, you're so sweet. We're going to have a love fest now. No, you're so sweet. No, you're so sweet. No, you're so sweet. <laughs> we could do that for an hour. We could do that for the whole hour. <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> Gotta love. Lots of love to go around. We are cute. Oh, we're cute. But it's true. It's true. Alright. There's a ton of little holes in here. But can you see, can you guys see, can you see the bumps being developed? Do you see the bumps coming up? I hope you can. I can see them on here very well, but I don't know if, how it relates online. It's supposed to look like I'm making little bubbles of this paint. Because I want it to look like the little pollen nubs. Alright. 
So I hope everybody's having a great day today so far. It's still early for us here. I know some of you are a little farther into your day. So hopefully you can tell me, people from the future, is Saturday a good day? <laughs> Has Saturday been a good day? What do I have to look forward to? Is it a good day? That's how I feel like when I'm talking to people, especially when I talk to people on the other side of the world, like Grant, you know, he's in Australia. It's already like Saturday night or whatever over there. I'm like, was Saturday a good day? Just let me know. <laughs> let me know whether I should, whether I should just stay inside or if it's a good day. <laughs> Oh, yeah, ice cream buds. He's good, too. Oh, so guess what? I had some sad but exciting news. It's both. I don't know how it can be both, but it is both. So, <laughs> my 22-year-old son, um... Broke the news to me that he's going to move out. And not only move out, but he's moving to another state. He's We're originally from Ohio. And he wants to go back to Ohio and work at my sister-in-law's restaurant. And move in with his friend. So, I was very sad. I was a little out of it and disconnected yesterday. Yeah. He'll be alright. I, I mean, he's working for my sister-in-law, so... And, yeah, I, I, it should be all right. <laughs> I'm just a mom and worry about him, you know. Anyway, but the good news is, the good news is, there's going to be an empty room. And an empty room in my house means I get an art studio, yes. <laughs> That's exactly what it means. So I will be, um, I will be planning remodeling his room. He put in his two weeks notice at both his jobs here yesterday. So I think he's going to be starting at my sister-in-law's restaurant like on the 26th. So we're talking weeks. It's like, boom, boom, boom. But his room has like these crazy green walls. I think I might keep them. They're really crazy. And his one whole wall, his one whole wall is, um, this is what made me, ice cream buds is what made me think of it. But his one whole wall in his room is chalkboard paint. And so I think I'm going to clean it up and put another layer of chalkboard paint on that wall. And then I will have a whole big wall. I can like get myself some sidewalk um, chalk and do some... Uh, mandalas and stuff and change it up like picture of the week maybe I'll do giant ones for Monday Mondays <laughs> I'll just do giant chalk mandalas on my chalkboard wall on Monday Monday that would be anything be like just do a big chalk thing on there oh yeah Maybe I will put a layer. That's, see, awesome idea. I would not have thought of the magnetic stuff. Maybe I'll do a layer of that too. Because he's had it for a few years. Yes, he's had it for a few years. So the chalkboard is a little rough and needs a good cleaning and um, a redo to be, you know, a little more chalkboardy. What? So that's it. That's the exciting news. So I'm sad and excited all at the same time. I'm going to be crazy for a little while, guys. I mean, I'm proud. It means I did my job. But, you know, you still get sad. Alright. So, you can see I have little bumps going on. You guys can... Does, does, does that read, like... A little bumpy and now we're going to thanks now we're going to throw in some colors for the leaves 
And like I said, when I do these, I almost like them being, I have a realistic reference, but I prefer it to be, um, yeah, see, the, they, they do look bumpier, see? I prefer my colors to be a little more on the vibrant and brighter side than real life when I do these digital. So, I will take inspiration from nature and then kind of bump it up a notch to where I want it to be. <laughs> I want it to be almost like hyper-reality. And so these are fun for me. These are like my therapy. I'll come in here and I'll do this stuff to um, just get a little loose. Thanks. I'm working on my way. I'm working on my way to being more abstract. One of these days. Wait till I start painting that digitally. I have an easel in my garage that I could set up. See, I'm trying to keep myself psyched up from being scared. So I like this um this blender because it'll smear it, but not blend the colors. So it just kind of makes them look like tie dye. And this is much redder than what's really in the flower in real life. But that's the way I like it. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. I don't know if anybody's old enough to know that song, except me. <laughs> uh. Is it? See? Okay. I, I I just got into music in the disco era. And then I went right into heavy metal 80s rock bands. I experimented with this. I was experimenting last night with this one. And I needed to go even more vibrant. So I will lose you with that. Ah, oh, the rock ballads, long hair. <laughs> oh, love it. Right, it was like Def, Def Leppard. Where, where were they from? Were they from around by you? Pour some sugar on me. My very first concert was the Rolling Stones. I like them too. Like I like okay. I like old Rolling Stones. So I wasn't a Beatles. I wasn't a Beatles. Oh, Ozzy? Okay, yeah. Ozzy. He's he's crazy. Crazy train. But he's really crazy. But yeah. I was talking about this in a scope the other day that, you know, like I'm this nice, sweet looking little soccer mom kind of girl. And I used to really shock people because <laughs> I'd pull up to the, I, I, I'd, I'd pull up to the parking, the lane to pick up kids after school and I'd have like disturbed or avenged sevenfold or something blaring from my car stereo. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, what? What are you? What? And then, like, my kids' friends would get in the car and I'd be, like, singing to the son and they're like, my parents don't even know who these are. And my sons are like, my mom introduced me to them. And I'm like, yeah, okay. What can we say? I like, I, I do, but then I'll go to classical music, jazz music. I like all music except country, really. So on this one, I'm really going to stay away from the white except for um, the highlights. So I'm going to smear these together and see what happens. So I, I don't want to lose the different streaks of color. I 
technically want them to just kind of be like almost tie dyed in together. And then I want a little bit of that red to flare up. But see, I don't have to worry about the lines. I'll come back and I'll erase the, you know, anything that goes outside the lines can get erased. But like inside the drawing, I'm not specifically staying in the lines per se. So what I need to remember is when I first touch down whatever color I'm on my color palette with this tool, that's what's going to stay there. So I have to keep the brush down if I don't want to keep adding that same color. Then it'll just kind of blend it in, so which I forgot right here and I got some red and I mean yellow in my red. What's grime? What's grime music? Is it like grunge music over here or? Am I old and we have grime music and I don't realize it? <sighs> oh, okay. I was gonna say the only the only modern like the new music that I hate I don't like I I don't I can't say I hate it I've heard a couple that are good I don't like that death metal stuff where they're like just like screaming their guts out about how angry they are or something it kind of scares me but you know I understand why kids listen to new stuff you know but when somebody's like I hate you bad bad like for the entire song. I'm like, oh, what is that? It scares me. Like, why is he so angry? <laughs> why is he so angry? Oh. So I get scared. <laughs> and my kids are like, oh, I ain't that mom. I'm like, they sound scary. If I saw somebody and they started screaming like that, that's scary. Yeah, some of them look scary, too, but it's scary. Alright, so you see how I'm just kind of really loosely, like, throwing this stuff around here. And it'll blend, but it's still just kind of smeary. And so I'm not worrying about any of the lines on my little dragonfly. Because that will be on a separate layer right on top. I am old. That's not old. I'm old. Whoever wants to know it's old, I'm old. But I don't feel old. My brain is like 27, 28. Every once in a while, my, <laughs> every once in a while my body says, No, that's wrong. I just turned 49. No. Not 50 yet. Next year, I'll be 50. I'm 50. 50 years old. I don't know if that's for anybody who watched old Saturday Night Live skits. Oh, see? That's sad. Oh, you have a baby. You're a baby. You're a year younger than my baby. Yeah, you have the whole world in front of you. And the biggest danger is not really um, seeing too much outside of yourself at this point. Which is understandable, but you have to see the bigger picture a little bit. No, oh, just don't be stupid. That's what I told my son. So don't be stupid. You can call me at four in the morning and I will come get you from anywhere. And feel free to just drink in my house so you don't have to worry about it. 
<laughs> What's sad is... Oh, okay. Here's a little political... So What's sad is it's not like it was when I was growing up. Well, you, well, that's good. Not drinking too much, but hopefully that won't change when you can do it. But, I mean, like, back in the day, people were like, yeah, kids are stupid. Shit's gonna happen. And, you know, like, the police would just kind of ring you home and say, yeah, your kid was being a dumbass. And, you know, take care of it or whatever. Now, you get in trouble for whatever. They don't give you a chance for anything. So you got to be careful. That's my mama voice. That's it. But I'm not your mama, so that's all you're getting. <laughs> all right. So now, my other, I'm going to develop some texture into the flower. I have this other tool, and it's called Gloopy. Don't they? They have the cutest names. I just love it. And what this does is I can be thin or fat lines. You can see it raising them up there. So, all right. I want to zoom out a little bit so I can kind of see it as a whole and I can get the right texture going. So I don't like that one. Alright. So whoop. sort of on the lines I went, I'm gonna draw a big but I want it to like flew out. So just just kind of like the um the bumps. Just kind of like the bumps, the longer or harder I press, the bigger it'll be. So basically, I'm just going to kind of put like the little petal veins in here. And it's going to give it a little bit of texture. So if I do it fat and long, a big one will come up. I'm kind of accenting the big lines. And then putting these little textures in around it. Help give a little direction to these petals. You will always be your mom's baby. I don't care if you're 50. So just accept it and be nice to your mom and understanding. <laughs> You'll always be the baby. So the sooner you accept it and um, give her a little special attention for it, the easier it'll be. <laughs> Just saying. Especially if you had a good mom. Okay, no worries. Thanks for stopping by. Especially if your mom's a good mom. When all of a sudden you have to try to not be a mom, it's hard, Simon. So be nice. An understanding to her. It makes it easier. Give her a little extra love and then she'll be like, oh, it's my baby. But. Okay, but see, you gotta tell her. Sometimes you don't always tell your mom that, right? Oh, my kids, they'll say it once in a while. And then it means a lot, but sometimes they don't remember to and I'm like, see? If you tell me more often, then it makes some sense. So just make sure, yeah, make sure she you feel that way. Make sure she knows it. It's a it's a quandary. 
because, I mean, we want you to grow up. We want you to be able to take care of yourself and be successful and have a great relationship and fall in love and all, all that all that good stuff. But we also don't want to be replaced. <laughs> just, just say, I'm going through that exact thing right now. So be kind to your mom. Hi. So I'm kind of hoping this has. Yeah, but you're only 21. Things change a lot from being 20 to in your 30s. So you never know. And it's not necessarily getting married, you know. It could be. Just, you know, someone that's there to care for you and you may live with them or whatever. It doesn't. We all want you to have somebody who thinks you're the best person in the whole world. Because <laughs> all moms think their kids are the best. Well, most moms. Alright, I'm not worrying about the texture too much underneath my bug. So let's step back and look, huh? All right. So that's coming around great, and it's perfect timing because it is halftime. So everybody, take a screenshot of our list today. Following me is Ash Tattoos. She has a surprise for us. What's she going to do? I don't know. We'll have to follow her to find out. So take a screenshot so you can find everybody on our little scope train today. Um, let's see, we're going all the way to one in the morning. One in the morning. Hi, Rob. So we have some great artists doing some really uh, lovely art today, and it's going to be an exciting, great day. And if you're new to me, there I am. Take a screenshot of that, too. Give me a follow. Give me a like. I'm on all this lovely social media. And if you know, I and mean, if you've seen my sign before, you will notice these two new symbols here I've added. I am now on Twitch. And I am on Flickr. So, feel free to follow, like, share, comment on any of those. I appreciate it. I really do. I'm, like, pushing myself this year. And so my goal is to put myself out there. But I need your help to do it. So, like me, share me, spread the word around. <laughs> Trying to spread the... Yeah, it's like 12 social medias. I'm like social media queen. I have a schedule and everything. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. But I'm not getting any younger, Rob. So I gotta get out there and do what I can do. And then at least I can say, hey, I tried my best and I gave it my all, you know? So for the rest of my life, I'm just gonna be trying to live the dream that I gave up 20 years ago. <laughs> and I wish I was a spring chicken. I wish I knew, I wish I knew then what I know now. I'll put it that way. All right, so I'm going to add another layer and it's going to be under my sketch, but on top of the flowers. And this is going to be color for my little, uh, dragonfly buddy here. This is actually an amethyst winged dragonfly. And they have a little bit of sort of purple in them. But I am going to, of course, jack it up and make it as vibrant, as pretty as I can. I'll be like, I'm so pretty, oh so pretty. I don't know why I feel like singing today. I'm not a singer, so I don't know why I'm singing. So there he is. The insect world. And we're going to give him some fun colors today. Um, not necessarily his real life colors, but close. Close. Alright, so... I'm just going to fill in 
here on his legs. That one's going to be different. I want a little. And I have a water blender. I don't know if I really want the smeary blender for this. Because I kind of just want a small little highlight here and to fill in the edge. And being an insect, I really love that loft tool. Because anything that's sort of hard, like a shell or like these legs, the loft tool makes it nice and round. All right. Which I will show you in a second. So it makes it look shelly. Shelly, is that a word? It makes it look shelly. Racer's way too big. Now, if I was doing just a portrait of the bug, I would work on the little fuzz on his legs, but this is too small to worry about the fuzz on his legs. But I would like to give him a little dimension, so I'm going to go like this and bring up these sections in three separate sections. And what this does is it makes him look a little buggy. So I'm just like making a bump here and pulling it up. Oh, it's a nice... Hi, how are you? Thanks for coming by, Daniel. It's a nice day today. I can hear the people getting their boats out. Outside my window, I hear And then as soon as they hit the buoys out of the wake zone, it's like a, we might be able to hear it. It's like, and they take off. <laughs> it's, um, it's a pretty crazy. All right. So I I'm kind of want to stay in like the blue and um, amethyst kind of colors just because that's what this guy is. But I want to give him some cool, um, some, some reflections in his eyes. I want it to be, I want him to be very vibrant. So I'm going to put some marks here. But yet, I'm going to add some green and maybe like a funky purple just a little bit and I'm just gonna don't want to blend it I'm just dotting some water so they kind of get that like um a little bit of that iridescent type of look you know where you can look at something and see like some different colors if that makes sense. And we're going to loft his eye out too. A nice big bulby circle. So he has a bug eye. Bug eye. Nice big one. And you see how the um, this magic little texture brush or whatever, it's called an impasto brush. It kind of it helps out with the look of the hard shell a little bit. All right. So I'm being inspired by the um, real life dragonfly, but I'm just not um, following it color for color because. It's my world. I want him to be a little more funky. A funky. Mm. 
Alright, so once again, I'm going to make a little bump here in the black. And for his back. And we're just going to touch in some little water and blend these edges a little bit. And I need to add a little bit of this purple down in the legs, just a touch. Because I want to give that effect of the light. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? When you kind of see it, you see an insect sometimes and they just like have those like different colors shimmering because like how the light hits them. Okay. All right, so he's looking a little buggy. And he doesn't have this much color in his body. It's a little more gray. I mean, the colors are there, but it's kind of gray. It's called Amethyst Dragonfly. Let's see, so think I paint a little bit of this in these lines here and then surround them with like a dark purple I don't really want to go black because I do want a different color and I'm going to add a touch of this to make the black pop a little bit. And we'll do the same ultramarine and pink thing like in here. And so I'm going to just loosely, once again, blend those, but the body marks are a little more separate. It's all about contrast, which is sort of why I chose um, the yellow the yellow flowers for the purple dragonfly. Because, let me step back in a minute, we'll step back. You'll see how the yellow is going to really make the um, purple kind of go boom. And it kind of almost, you know, it's, I want to have a little bit of that psychedelic sort of you know, colors. So the background's very fuzzy. It's supposed to look like it's really out of focus and it's light and fuzzy. And then everything else is just going to be these big pop of colors. And yellow and purple are on opposite sides of the color spectrum. So they work together, but they're opposites, which help with the contrast. So, oh, that's too close, too close, too close. If anybody has any questions or just wants to talk about something, feel free. <laughs> Hi, Joy. I'll make his little body rounded out, wavy. So I'm just creating like these little ridges in here. You can see me popping them out. And a little bit here. And I just want to spread the water a little. Hi, thanks for joining. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Just doing a little bit of um, digital graphic art. This is a amethyst dragonfly I'm working on, and uh, I'm kind of 
popping his colors a little bit. All right, so just like the eye back here on this part of his body shell, I want to give him a little bit of the iridescent look. But I'm going to start with this really dark, almost black purple. And throw some of that in there as a base. And then we'll add a little bit of the bright pinks. green, aqua blue, aqua kind of color. So closer to the body, it's going to be darker and more iridescent kind of quality on the back. You just some little tricks. All right, so I'm going to take this depth lofter. I want it really, really small. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm going to do here. So I have my depth lofter. I'm going to just do a bunch of little bumps. So I'm making him bumpy back here. So this is creating digital texture into the color. And I'm just randomly doing bumps. Some will be big, some will be small. But just make it look bumpy. And then over here, I want to do a couple of um, texture lines for his hard, hard shell here. Right down in the shadow. And then we're going to add some little bumps in here, too. And it, you can see how it changes the colors. I'm just like, I, I want it to be more dotty than bumpy, actually. Those little... I'm just tapping it and making these little divots. Oh, helps if I move the camera to where you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not used to my big screen yet. Let's see if I just tap it. It makes like these little... Now the eye I want to keep smooth. I want to keep that... Um, smooth, but I think I want to spread the colors just a little back down in here. It's a little smoother, but his body, the, the legs are like a little hairy, so I want to do some little textures on here. Slight. You won't really see them in the finished item, but it 
does affect the way the light hits the colors. Spread the love around. Alright, so it creates some natural highlights and um, shadows. And then if we step back, you can see how it's helping it give it some dimension here in the painting. So, I'm a dragonfly, they're pretty cool. Because they have this long, like, tail part of their body, and it's like a little stick. And that's all nice hard shells, so I get to have lots of fun with texture on the hard shell. And then the wings are almost transparent, but they have color that the light hits as well. So, I have a trick for that, and I'll show you a little bit of that right now. Alright. So what I do is I create, thank you, I create a whole other layer just for the wings. So I have a separate layer. So the wings are going to be totally on their own, but I'm coloring underneath the lines because the lines are a big part of what I'm coloring. So, basically, I'm still going to do this vibrant. I only have like 10 minutes, so I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you the, the theory. If you want to see the whole thing, you have to follow me on somewhere and it'll get posted. <laughs> but, alright, so right in here is, let's see, dark light, okay. Right in here is the most vibrant part of the amethyst dragonfly. So I'm going to put in a bunch of colors and I'm not too worried right now about their exact placement. Good morning! I'm going to get a variation of some purples. And maybe a little bit of the ultramarine blue, or maybe a little lighter blue. All right. And a little bit of this. And then some more of this, like, poppy pink. So I'm just going to smear it in here. So we're kind of tight on, but I'm going in the direction. Thank you. I'm going in the direction of this webbing on the wing. So I could get the waves of the creases. So these are all little folds in the wing. And I'm just trying to get the effect of that. <clears throat> I'll come back and clean it up. I only have a few minutes. I'm going to show you this trick because it's super cool. So then I take this impasto brush. And it is called... A grain embosser. So I'll take the grain embosser and I'll start brushing these little grain textures on it, which will almost make it look sort of stained glassy. If you could see how it gives it this little, makes some of the colors pop through a little bit. Mm 
I'm still going in the direction of this weavy stuff. Yes, and it gives it a little more of the um, effect of being a wing. So if we step back really quick, you see how it makes it kind of pop but look a little more see-through. So now the big fun is <sighs> I should have painted that under here. Let me do this really quick so you can see, get an idea. So let's see. I have my yellow and I'm going to just, so I'm just throwing this color underneath here because this flower underneath is going to be painted, okay? All right, zoom in a little bit. All right, so I painted the flower that's underneath here. Then I take this layer and I'll start playing very slowly with it. Yeah, but very slowly, I'm going to start messing with the opacity of my wing. I can make it almost totally see-through, and I think what happens is this part of the wing will probably, I'll probably do this wing in four or five different layers, because this part of the wing, I'm probably going to want it to be more like this. But then, like, this part of the wing in here that's more veiny will be almost totally non-existent. So I can adjust the different sections of the wing to be see-through as much as I'd like it to be. And that's how you could get... I use this for when, when I do tool work. You know, tooling is like that netting on dresses. I use that for that. Two, you can make it so it's like see-through and it's just adjusting it's just adjusting the um, opacity on the layer individual layers and just like the background layer has two oh that's how I could show that really quick too same theory my background layer has two layers on it. So if I shut this one off, you can see the background without of it. And when I put this on, and if I click on this layer, I can totally adjust how much or how green it could go from totally green to just a green overlay, a green feel. So I can you, you can adjust that. So those are things you could play around with. All right. So we're going to step back and make it smaller so we can kind of see it as a whole. It's going to have some shading put in. Be finishing the flowers, working on the vibrancy and texture of my um, dragonfly. Uh, the background might change. I don't know if I like the greenish as much. I might um, put a purpley gray over it, I think, instead. I don't know. So that's that's why it's on a separate layer. I can totally get rid of it and play around with it and figure something else out. So that's the fun of digital art. And even though it's flat on a screen and I'm not painting with real paint, I can play around with it and create textures like real paint. And when they print out, it does show up. And um, the other trick I do is when I print out, I will take real paint and paint on certain ridges onto the printout. So just because, you know, digital art doesn't limit you to not being um, painty or arty or textures. You just have to be a little more creative and figure out how to do them. So that is my time for today. Next up is Ash Tattoos, everybody. I don't know what she's doing. It's going to be a surprise. So everybody follow at Ash underscore tattoos. And we're going to head over there and see what she has for us today because I like surprises. I don't know. 
I like surprises. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she has. Well, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for spending some time with me. Once again, I am Kathy Grillo of Kathy Grillo Designs. Oh, no. Yeah. Woo. Follow me, like me, send me some comments, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, tell me what the weather's like. I don't care, I like hearing from you. So, I hope to hear from some of you guys. You can follow me. I like to follow back and get to know everybody. And um, if you're an artist, you know, we'll, we'll be convo and you can always talk about stuff. Well, love, give me a, hit me up. I'm more than willing to, I have, um video chatted with people before to help them out and hit buttons on the thing. So, I mean, if you want to learn, all you have to do is ask, and I'll be figure out a way to try to help you best I can. You can send me some pictures, whatever. Um, I'm open to it. So hit me up, folks. Thanks for all the shares. Thanks for all the hearts. Thanks for all the likes. And if I see you out there scoping, I'll share it on Twitter and everything for you, too. So have a wonderful, creative day. Thank you. Let's go watch Ash and see what she has in store. Whoop, whoop.